All right, I've been using the S5 II for quite some time now. I know people are using this camera as a video camera, but I was curious about the Lumix system and their photography side. Uh, do they have good image quality? Do they have great colors? I keep hearing Lumix owners saying that the color science from Lumix is very good. And I wanted to see that for myself. Because of its new updated autofocusing system, more on that later, I wanted to see if this camera is good enough for portrait photography. I hope to answer all that in this review for any of you guys interested in what this Fujifilm shooter has to say about the Panasonic Lumix S5 II. Let's go. I'm going to start off with things I like about this camera. I honestly like the way this camera feels in, in my hand. I like the design. I love the grip on this camera. I love the way the buttons feels on this camera. Everything about this camera is nice and solidly, solidly built. And I also love the aesthetic of this camera. I think this is one of the more sexy looking cameras out there in my opinion the buttons are nice to press and the mode dials make sense to me i, I love this dedicated uh record button right here it's like so red it looks it's so pretty to look at <laughs> and another thing i like about this camera is it's autofocusing i think it's autofocusing feels more reliable than the Fujifilm X-T5 and the X-H2S. That being said, it's still nowhere near Sony. People like to compare the system to uh, Sony nowadays. I guess Sony is the gold standard now. I have to say for the first introduction into phase detection, this is a really good start. I can see Lumix closing the gap in a few more years. While using this camera for portraits, it was able to detect the face and the eye quite well. And I think it does a really good job. Like I said earlier, it's not at the 90 to 95% accuracy like the Sony, but it's really good. And another thing I like about the S5 II is its image quality. I do enjoy the colors I get on the S5 II. I do like the skin tone of this camera. I've been able to get some beautiful looking images with this camera. <laughs> Another thing I like about this camera is its high ISO performance. I shot something at ISO 5000 and I can't believe how clean the image looked. I was inspecting it to see if I was able to see if I could find any noise, but I couldn't find any. So I'm I'm quite impressed. <laughs> the S5 II does have a dual native ISO and I guess this is why we have such clean looking images even at high ISO ranges. We gotta talk about the video features. I find myself not using its insane video features as much as I like because I use the Fujifilm X-H2S as my video camera and also because the battery life on the S5 II sucks. But whenever I do use the S5 II for video, it's been amazing. The video footage is beautiful. The colors are wonderful. And I just love how clean the footage look. They also have a robust set of video features. The anamorphic D squeeze, which came in handy for me when I was reviewing the C-Ray Saturn anamorphic lens. You also have waveforms, you have different aspect ratio markers for you to film in, and much, much more. And this is something that I wish uh, came to Fujifilm because it would have been nice to have all this stuff. You can also put in your LUTs to see if you want, if you want to see what your footage would look like uh, on the back of your LCD screen. And you can also use your LUTs as presets for your photos. In doing that, it will throw off your raw, raw files. I was using the Phantom LUT to uh, take photos with in Italy and the images I got look amazing. I was like super excited because I thought, yeah, my shots are going to have like this cinematic feel and this color grade to it. But then when I came back to inspect the raw files, I realized even though I exposed for what I thought was correct because of the LUT, it was underexposed when I got uh, when I got the raw files and uh, put it into Lightroom. So it messes with the raw files. So if you want to use a LUT as some sort of uh, straight out of the camera JPEG, just be mindful that your RAWs may look different from what your JPEGs look like. It could be the phantom LUTs that I was using. I don't know. I just It's just something that I noticed and it did underexpose my RAWs a lot. And then I, had, I have to push the exposure value probably to like one and a half to two full stops to try to get it back to the right exposure. And this could be 
uh, annoying because then now you're just um, stretching out your your data too far and sometimes you can't even like retrieve any of those data back so i don't know what exactly it could be if anyone in here could explain that to me that would be great we have to talk about the ibis this is some of the best ibis in the game if anybody has the gold standard for ibis it's this camera right here holy hell every shot i get it just feels it just looks so smooth it really balances out my jittery hands and I'm not really graceful when I walk. So when I do the nin ninja walk, it doesn't feel as steady as I would like. Every time I would walk with this camera, it really gives me a steady looking footage. And I'm really happy about the IBIS and the S5 II. Okay, enough sweet talking about this camera. What, what are some things that I do not like about this camera? Well, number one is the battery life. It's not, it's not great to be honest with you. I just find the battery just depletes faster than my Fujifilm batteries and it's quite noticeable. Whenever I film 6.2K open gate on my Fujifilm X-H2, I can get like close to an hour to an hour and 20 minutes of recording time. Whereas with the Panasonic S5 II, if I do 6K open gate, I am getting 30 to 40 minutes of recording time before I have to switch out again. So it, it's pretty trash. The next thing I don't like about this camera is its load up time when you power it up. It takes a couple of seconds for the camera to turn on. A couple of seconds can make a difference of capturing the perfect moment. Again, I have to compare this to my Fuji because whenever I shoot with my Fuji, I just turn it on, I just put the camera onto my, uh, I just put the EVF onto my eye and it's ready to be used right away. But whenever I do that with the S5 II, I, I turn it on and then I put it up to my eye, I still see black for a couple of seconds. And in, in that moment, it does feel very, very long. So that's another thing I don't like about this camera because you, you are missing such uh, so many moments that you could have been capturing. Another thing I don't like about this camera is and whenever I try to autofocus, there would be a change in exposure when I hold, when I half press the shutter. I was told it has something to do with the camera telling me that what I had, what I had the uh, scene exposed for is not the correct exposure. So whenever, it changes exposure, that's the correct exposure that they think the camera thinks that it should be at. So every time you shoot with this camera, it may look it may look like you're overexposed. And that's something that is very annoying. And that's something that I wish I it could be turned off. So I don't know where that feature is. I couldn't find the feature in this in the menu system, so I guess it's not there. So a Lumix in a firmware update, any way we can turn this thing off because I know what I want in my exposure and I don't want the camera to be throwing me off when I'm shooting. It confuses me from time to time and something that I'm not used to but I'm sure you, you Lumix users are quite used to this feature because I think it's a feature. For its price I think you're getting such a great value out of this camera. A camera that can do 6k open gate, face detection autofocusing, takes great images with great colors with a great build and has one of the best IBIS in the game all under $2,000. That's freaking crazy. I think this camera is so good for its price. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the Lumix S5. Do you guys have this camera? Do you guys love it, hate it? Uh, this camera has been a wonderful photography camera for me. I took it on my Italy trip and I got some amazing shots with it. The AF is also great for portraits and I am loving the output I get from this camera. And I wish there were more eyes on the Lumix brand because I think they make solid cameras and I can't wait to see what they do in the future with their other lines like the S1, the S1H, the S1 and S1R, I believe. They're gonna come out with a Mark II version, I bet, with the face detect, and I can't I can't wait to see what they do with that. But yeah, if you're interested in this camera, links are down in the description below. If you find this video helpful, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much.